What is up, investors? Happy Sunday, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show, where we keep you up to speed on the most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, we are back today with a weekly CrowCoin update, and there is plenty of important information to get through in this video. For starters, we did cover earlier this week how the SEC ordered a centralized exchange to shut down their crypto staking service, and I want to talk about the potential implications this will have in the future on Crypto.com's Crypto Earn program, Binance earn program but most importantly in my opinion the crypto.com visa program which does require you to stake a certain amount of crow in return for this card now the second thing i do want to cover in today's video is the crypto.org chain version 4.0 upgrade which is set to go live in q1 of 2023 and while it is an upgrade this unfortunately is coming along with a five percent minimum commission rate on staking rewards and last but not least we're going to talk about the competition heating up here between the bnb chain and the chronos chain in the GameFi area and i do think this is important as web3 gaming i believe will be a big place of growth for both of these blockchains in the future so without further ado it is time to sit back relax grab that morning cup of joe and enjoy the show now make sure to hit that sub like and notification bell if you have not already and join the everything crypto squad and with that we're going to hop right in here with today's question of the day and today i want to know if you have to choose between crow or bnb and you could only pick one to invest in which one would it be and why let me know in the youtube comments down below and with that we're going to hop right in here with the chart i do want to give you guys an update on crow coin as in last week's update we did say to look for a rejection at the bull market support band which we did in fact see play out over this previous week now the reason i did call out the bull market support band as a potential area of resistance is because you can see going back here to march and april of 2022 that we did get a double top rejection at the upper band and then we came in for a retest of the lower band in november we got rejected and now once again we have been rejected at this bull market support band so i do think that in the coming weeks crow is going to come back down for a retest of the seven set area which does align with both the 50 and 100 day moving average Average. And if we do break below the seven cent area, I do think that a retest of five and a half cents is coming. Now, five and a half cents has been a very strong level of support and a very strong trading area for Crow. The first time here was based on the November capitulation, in which it ran from five and a half cents up to seven and a half cents, making for a nice run of about 35%. And then more recently, here on the year to date rally, you can see that Crow actually made about a 50% move here from five and a half cents all the way up to eight cents at the lower end of of the bull market support band so if we do see a potential retest of five and a half cents that is definitely another trading opportunity that i may consider taking always not financial advice but definitely something that i am taking a look at here on the crow charts and we will update you guys as the price action does unfold in the coming weeks but as it stands right now i do think crow is headed back to the downside after once again failing to get back above the bull market support band now, I do want to hop into the news here, starting off with a piece of news we did cover earlier this weekend that Kraken FX is set to shut down their crypto staking service program and pay a $30 million fine in an SEC settlement. Now, according to the SEC's complaint, since 2019, Kraken has offered and sold its crypto asset staking services to the general public, whereby Kraken pools certain crypto assets transferred by investors and stakes them on behalf of those investors. When investors provide tokens to stake as a service provider is they lose control of those tokens and take on risks associated with those platforms with very little protection. The complaint alleges that Kraken touts its staking investment program offers an easy to use platform and benefits that derive from Kraken's efforts on behalf of investors, including their, their strategies to obtain regular investment returns and payouts. Now, Gary Gensler says here, whether it's through staking as a service, lending, or other means, crypto intermediaries when offering investment contracts in exchange for investment or tokens need to provide the proper disclosures and safeguards required by our security laws today's actions should make clear to the marketplace that staking as a service providers must register and provide full fair and truthful disclosure and investor protection in case after case we've seen the consequences when individuals and businesses tout and offer crypto investments outside of these protections provided by the federal securities laws investors lack the disclosures they deserve and are harmed when they don't receive them. 
And he says here, today we take another step in protecting retail investors, okay, by shutting down this unregistered crypto staking program through which Kraken not only returned outside or offered outsized returns untethered to any economic realities, but also retained the right to pay them no returns at all. All the while, it provided them zero insight into, among other things, its financial condition and whether it even had the means of paying the marketed returns in the first place. So the SEC here pretty much saying that because Kraken did not register the offer and sale of their crypto asset staking service program that it is now being shut down completely and the sec claims this is to quote unquote protect investors when it's pretty ironic because the, the big thing that has actually caused a lot of these centralized exchanges to fall including celsius and voyager is in fact the lack of regulation on behalf of the sec and instead of setting clear guidelines they are simply penalizing all these crypto exchanges for offering the staking service i mean i really don't agree with this at all but what I want to talk about now is what this kind of means for the future of these centralized exchanges and more specifically in regards to crypto.com who does offer their very own crypto earn program here which is incredibly similar to Kraken's staking program where you basically lock up your crypto for either a flexible one month or three month contract in return for an APY that is based on the amount you of the amount of time you have agreed to lock up your crypto now similarly here we have Binance US with their very own Binance earn program where you can earn up to 15% APY. You can see here that Ethereum is being offered at a 5% APY, BNB at 2.5%, Cardano 4.5%, uh, just for under that 4.3%, Solana at 7.4%, AVAX 5.2%, Atom 15%, Polkadot 10%, and honestly, I do think these will be subject to scrutiny from the SEC in the future. Now, it's not so much the crypto earn programs I'm concerned with because honestly, you can find much better rates in DeFi. What I am most concerned with here is the crypto.com visa for US cardholders. And uh, the reason being here is because right on the crypto.com website, it says that you have to stake a certain amount of crow in return for this card for a six month period. And based on whether or not you have your crow staked after the six month period, you are either subject to getting these rewards or having them removed if you opt to unstake. So essentially you stake up your crow for six months to get the visa. And then if you choose to unstake after six months, you can see here as I flick the unstake option that you lose majority of the benefits, effectively meaning that you are heavily incentivized to keep your crow staked in return for the cashback rewards and the thing here and i think that the big word comes down to stake if the sec sees this on crypto.com's website and sees that people are taking these crypto.com visas and using them in everyday life they may once again try to go after crypto.com i mean i say once again they haven't tried to go after crypto.com yet but clearly they are going after a lot of these staking programs from these u.s centralized exchanges and given that crypto.com does operate in the u.s and their visa program is fully live i am concerned this may be subject to some regulatory scrutiny so just something to keep in mind here if you are a crypto.com us card holder and i really do hope that crypto.com is able to either change the wording or work around this so that the sec does not come after them in the future for this because i do think that the visa is a very juicy incentive for people to lock up their crow in return for these cashback rewards amongst the other benefits here so that is the first thing i am watching in regards to crypto.com and uh, that's that's pretty much it for the centralized exchange news because we covered a lot of it this previous week. Now I want to get into the DeFi side of things. I think that DeFi is going to be a lot more important moving forward. And it's worth noting here that any of the rates you can get through the centralized exchanges, you can generally get much better rates through DeFi. So I do want to talk about the crypto.org chain here because they are in fact implementing an upgrade in Q1 of 2023. And there is one piece of news that did in fact catch my attention, which is point A, the 5% minimum commission rate. So our community has been proposing to impose a minimum commission fee of 5% on all crypto.org chain validators commission rates. As a response to this request, we will implement a 5% mint commission rate in this upgrade. This implementation would highly incentivize validators and help us to maintain a sustainable validator ecosystem. Crypto.org validators can decide their own commission fee structure and how the reward distribution works. After this network upgrade, Crypto.org chain validators can still set commission rates at above 5%. For validators who offer a commission lower than 5%, their commission fee will be automatically raised to 5% when the upgrade is complete. So for those of you that don't know, there are some pools here on the crypto.org chain that are offering a 0% commission fee, including Jerry's pool and Finland here, the top two pools. 
And I think the reason that these two have been the largest pools for crow staking is because of the 0% commission. This will no longer be the case when this upgrade version 4.0 does go live. And something I do want to clarify in this video, because I don't know if I made it incredibly clear in the last video, and I got quite a few questions about it in the comments. So you can see here that, that, that uh, sorry, words tough sometimes. The APY here on the right, the maximum APY being offered is 10.96%. So this 5% is is not coming out of the 10.96% directly, meaning that it would be reduced to a 5.96% APY. It simply means that of the rewards you are earning, 5% of those are going to be given to the validator as commission. So it is not being reduced from 10.96% to 5.96%. It means that if you were to receive, let's say 100 crow per week from this 10.96% APY, you are now only receiving 95 crow. So at the end of the day, it's really not a big deal. And if 5% commission here. It's not the end of the world, honestly, especially if it is going to incentivize more validators to join this ecosystem, help decentralize the crypto.org chain as much as possible. Because you can see here at the moment that right off the bat, like Jerry and Finland make up over 11% of all the crow delegated to this chain. So at the end of the day, guys, I mean, no, I'm not going to say it's like ideal or fantastic to have a 5% commission rate in terms of your immediate rewards, but it's really not a terrible thing. And if they need to do this to ensure that more people are participating in this ecosystem, I really don't think it's that big of a deal when all is said and done for the crypto.org chain. Now, I do want to hop into the Kronos chain and the BNB chain here as BNB actually made a really big partnership this previous week with Gaiman to grow in the Web3 game industry. So Gaiman is an esports team and they do actually have one for PUBG Mobile, a game that had accumulated approximately 1.3 billion downloads and grossed over $9 billion, making it the third highest grossing mobile game and the second most played mobile video game of all time. BNB chain will proudly imprint this their name on the team's jerseys as a Web3 Esports Growth Initiative partner of the Gaiman Esports team. Now, what wasn't released in the actual uh, Binance website article, which I think was really important to include, is that they are signing uh, a new roster for The Harvest. Now, The Harvest is a new Web3 game that is coming out, and given the fact that Gaiman is one of the biggest esports, you know, esports companies in the world, I think that this sector does have a lot of growth ahead of it, and the BNB chain does want to be on their jerseys and at the forefront front of web3 gaming so we can actually take a look here at the harvest game on the website and to be honest it looks like a really impressive game so it says here fight alongside your teammates to take control of your universe's essence the harvest is a third person shooter with moba and battle royale events so you can team up with friends, choose your heroes and your cards. Every season, new NFT cards will appear. So this is not a Web2 game where your cards actually stay in your app. These cards are NFTs that can be traded and sold on secondary marketplaces. There are some different characters you can choose from here. You can see they have ability cards, companion cards, which look like uh, companions that will fight next to your upgrade skins. So some sort of, this is really just more so for like the looks of your character. And then calling cards, you can create your own identity by owning these exclusive NFTs. So it does look like this game is actually looking to hop into the GameFi sector. And I want to show you guys uh, a quick clip of this because the gameplay actually does look very, uh, very impressive, even though it is pre-concept at the moment. But just to give you guys a taste of what is to come in the future for Web3 blockchain gaming. And if this game does take off and they have the BNB chain on all their jerseys here at competitive sports events, this could be a very big deal for the future of GameFi growth on BNB chain. I mean, look at this game. It looks absolutely stunning here for a blockchain game. And uh, to be honest, I think this has been one of the things that has held me back from really being super bullish on any Web3 gaming initiatives at the moment is that they've kind of put the play to earn aspect first and not so much prioritize the fun aspect. I think that the most important thing here needs to be making a triple A game that people want to play. And this is what is going to foster that long term adoption of blockchain games. If these games are not as fun as the simple Web2 games you can play on an Xbox, a PlayStation, a Nintendo, then they are not going to take off they need to incentivize players through fun to hop in here and then the earning aspect the nft aspect can come second and uh, this game definitely looks like they have prioritized the gaming aspect first 
So I think this was a very good choice from the BNB chain to select Game It as an esports partner as they do kind of make their way into the launch of the Harvest game. So I will be keeping an eye on that. And I do want to talk about this in relation to the Chronos chain as one of the biggest areas of growth for the Chronos chain that I have personally been keeping my eye on is in fact the Web3 gaming area through Chronos Play. Now Chronos Play is interoperable with both the Unreal and the Unity engine. These are two of the best gaming engines in the industry. So you can actually see here Unity on their official website. Let's go to their products, no solutions, games. There it is. So the Unity engine has two different things for developers to build on their platform. The ability to create your own game with their industry leading tools for building incredible performant gaming experiences, as well as the ability to build, manage and grow your your game, sorry, through Unity gaming services. And the next engine I do want to take a look at here is the Unreal engine. And whether you are a gamer, maybe your kids are gamers, you definitely do recognize at least one of the games that the Unreal engine has been built out on and that is Fortnite. So think about that the chronos chain is now interoperable with the unreal engine which has seen one of the most influential games of this generation here built on this very own gaming engine and once again i do think this does mean very big things for chronos play in the future if they can incentivize games from the unity and the unreal engine to essentially port themselves over to the chronos chain and become a web 3 blockchain based game imagine a game like fortnite in which you actually have full ownership of all your guns and different weapons skins that you can sell on a secondary nft marketplace this is the future of gaming if these blockchain games can focus on fun first and then incorporate the ownership of your of your assets aspect into these different games and uh, we did see the Chronos chain here actually make a tweet highlighting some of the gaming projects that have been expanding over the past couple of months on their blockchain. A few that I do want to cover that I have spoken about previously is first of all, DG Pals. This is sort of like a Pokemon style game here, but you know, unlike Pokemon where your game is stuck on the cartridge, you actually get ownership of these Pokemon that can then be traded on a secondary marketplace. Very cool concept. The Loaded Lions Main City, another game we have spoken about here on the channel that has not been released yet but this is being worked on by the crypto.com official team it is incorporating the loaded lions nfts here into the game and this is going to be a tycoon style game powered by chronos where each player is an entrepreneur with the goal of building and designing their dream city and mansion then we have VVS Finance making their first game, VVS Gachi. This was launched by them in December of 2022. It is an extension of the VVS Minor Mole NFT project where you can feed, interact with, and take your Minor Mole on different quests. So once again, incorporating these NFTs that are on the Kronos chain into actual GameFi applications. We've also got the upcoming Atlantis game that is being made by Argo Finance. This is a play to earn game making its way to the Kronos chain, which does involve using your Argonaut NFTs and going on different spaceship races in a race against other players that are playing this game in an effort to earn some rewards and resources. So a very cool player versus player and play to earn game that I am looking forward to on the Kronos chain here. And yeah, it just seems like there is a lot of different games being launched on this chain in the near future. We did also recently discuss the new Atlantis game being made by Argo Finance in which you were able to take your Argonaut NFTs and take them on exciting adventures in Atlantis and discover endless rewards in this upcoming metaverse game. So there are three different aspects to this game that are announced as of right now. Number one is Planet Expedition to mine valuable gemstones and stardust. They had their Planet Genesis Mint here on February 1st and sold out all 6,000 of those planets. Gemstone upgrades fuse your lower tier gemstones to generate a higher tier gemstone and three race your spaceships so sending your spaceships on a global race to compete against other players for rewards so a player versus player aspect as well as a play to earn aspect i really hope that argo finance hits this one out of the park as this could bring a lot of attention to their very own project as well as the chronos chain as a whole and then they cap it off here the chronos chain on twitter saying why build your games on chronos low transaction fees and high throughput 70 mil addressable market of crow fam gamers i think this is referring to the crypto.com users now sitting at 80 million three grants and accelerator programs to support promising teams for chronos play sdk and fiat on slash off ramps build your games on chronos today now i do want to wrap things up here talking about both the crypto.org chain and the chronos chain in terms of their growth and in terms of the crypto.org chain to start off you can see here that of a of a float of just under 26 billion 
5.39 billion of that is locked up and delegated via the crypto.org chain, meaning that over 20% of the total crow supply is in fact staked right now to the crypto.org chain. Now, taking a look here at the actual growth of this, we can see that a month ago, so January 13th, this total sat at 5.28 billion, now sitting at 5.39 billion. So an additional 110 million crow, give or take, being staked in the past month. And we do like to see growth of the crypto.org chain for the main reason being that once you stake your crow on this network it is subject to a 28 day unbonding period effectively meaning that any crow staked here people will have to wait four weeks to get this back which means that for the time being it is removed from the float so at the moment one fifth of crow is in fact bonded to the crypto.org blockchain for the staking rewards and then in terms of the chronos chain here we are sitting at just under 4 million in terms of that tvl 399 million and uh, from that all-time peak there of 3.47 billion i mean definitely a lot lower just under a 90 percent reduction in the amount of tvl but in terms of the amount of crow circulating on this blockchain from a peak of 10.5 billion down to about 5.23 billion so about a 50 percent decline there in the amount of crow circulating on this blockchain now despite this pullback chronos is still sitting in the top 10 here amongst all blockchains in terms of tvl ahead of mixin in 11th place with 345.99 mil and then we have solana ahead of chronos here which is sitting at 450.6 mil now if these games can make their way over to the chronos chain bring a lot of mainstream adoption and attention to it then i do think that chronos will be really set to benefit from this in terms of tvl and i do hope that in the coming years we are able to see chronos climb its way up this blockchain ranking list as this should mean very good things for crowcoin in terms of the adoption and price appreciation so on that note i hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video you know what to do if you made it all the way to the end you are an absolute champion let me know in the youtube comments down below and claim that champion status i hope you are all having an amazing sunday and i hope to catch you in the next one peace out for now